بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو دا کورس نیٹ ورک سیکیورٹی مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر مونیم علی شاہ اینڈ آئی بی ٹیچنگ یو دس کورس نیٹ ورک سیکیورٹی آئی بی بریفلی انٹروڈیوسنگ مائی سیلف آئی ہیو ریسنٹلی کمپلیٹڈ مائی پی ایچ ڈی فرام یونیورسٹی آف بیٹ فور شاہ یو کے بیک ان ٹو تھاؤزینڈ اینڈ تھرٹین اینڈ پرائر ٹو دیٹ The course was about security technologies and applications. And in 2003, I did my MSc Computer Science from University of Peshawar. You'll be glad to hear that I have been serving Comsats Institute of Information Technology for the last 11 years. Uh, here are some pictures where uh, I have uh, studied and completed my PhD. So the top picture is uh, our main campus. Uh, the bottom picture is showing you the postgraduate center where I also studied. Uh, this particular bottom left picture is an interesting one. And uh, if you have heard about uh, the last Viceroy for, uh, for India, Lord Mountbatten, this particular uh, picture is uh, his accommodation. Uh, and the uh, University of Bedfordshire is lucky enough to have this uh, accommodation as their uh, accounts and finances, uh, finances uh, campus. Right, so about this course. Uh, this course is very interesting and uh, perhaps uh, uh, we are very much keen to know how security uh, concerns uh, makes different uh, aspects uh, uh, around us uh, uh, vulnerable and uh, how we can ensure security. We will be focusing uh, how computer networks could be secured by applying different security tools, technologies and protocols. You will be given a survey and exposure of both principles and practices of network security. Uh, you will also be taught uh, how different threats can harm the computer network and how some of the organization's sensitive data could be compromised and uh, more importantly uh, how this sensitive data will be made secured against uh, vulnerabilities and threats and uh, in this particular course you will also be able to understand different categories of security violations in a computer network. کہنے کا مطلب یہ ہے کہ ہم اس کورس میں یہ دیکھیں گے کہ کمپیوٹر نیٹورکس میں سیکیورٹی بریچز کیسے ہو سکتے ہیں اور کیسے مختلف قسم کے اٹیکس ہمارے سینسٹیو ڈیٹا کو نقصان پہنچا سکتے ہیں اور ہم ان کے ان اٹیکس سے بچنے کے لیے کیا ممکن اقدامات کر سکتے ہیں uh, one important thing to learn about to remember about this course is that uh, we are not going to learn computer hacking aap ye mat zehen mein rakhiye ga ke computer hacking bhi sikhai jayegi aur ek server ko kaise break in karke uh, sensitive data par access gain ki ja sakti hai hum aisi uh, koi cheez is course mein discuss nahi karenge but uh, to uh, but you uh, but to summarize اس کورس میں ہم سیکیورٹی بریچز دیکھیں گے کیسے ڈفرنٹ ٹولز اینڈ ٹیکنالوجیز کو یوز کرتے ہوئے ہم اپنے کمپیوٹر نیٹ ورکس کو زیادہ سیکیور بنا سکتے ہیں دی ٹیکس بکس فار دس کورس وچ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو فالو از کرپٹو گرافی اینڈ نیٹ ورک سیکیورٹی سکس ایڈیشن بائی ولیم اسٹالنگس اینڈ دی ریفرنس بک جو کہ آپ اس کے ساتھ ساتھ دیکھ سکتے ہیں وہ ہے نیٹ ورک سیکیورٹی پرائیویٹ کمیونیکیشن ان اے پبلک ورلڈ اینڈ سیکنڈ ایڈیشن بائی چارلی کوف مین سو دیز آر دی ٹو بکس اینڈ اور مین کورس ٹاپکس آر کورڈ فرام دی مین ٹیکسٹ بک کرپٹو گرافی اینڈ نیٹ ورک سیکیورٹی لیٹ می گیو یو این انٹروڈکشن آف دس کورس ایز یو آر آلریڈی اویئر دیٹ دس کورس از کمپرائز آف 32 lectures and uh, this course has been divided into following three major parts. 
In the first part, we will be discussing computer or system security. We really need to know that uh, how uh, security is important in a computing environment or how security uh, should be ensured in different systems. Our second part uh, discusses the network security and uh, the last part would be uh, uh, the last part would be internet security right let me further uh, give you an idea about uh, what are we going to study in the first part so the main concepts uh, that will be discussed in the first part of this course is uh, security concepts uh, what are different security violation categories we will be seeing what do we mean by confidentiality integrity availability and what are different uh, security measure levels that could be deployed at different uh, 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 that could be deployed in different uh, aspects in order to make the uh, make the computing environment more secure uh, we will also be having a look on the methods which will help us to uh, make our computer systems and networks resilient against uh, attacks and security vulnerabilities. We will also be discussing and uh, talking about the concept of firewalls. Uh, out of those uh, 32 lectures, we have dedicated lecture 1 to lecture 4 for understanding the concept of computer or system security. The second part is perhaps uh, the largest part of this course and uh, here most of the technical contents about this course will be discussed. I say that uh, this course, this second part is uh, like an engine of your car which is comprised of more technical components. So in this particular part uh, we will be having uh, different discussions uh, about security tools and other um, protocols. I have uh, further divided the second part into five different subparts. The first part uh, discusses the analysis of security of the network. In the second part, uh, we will be seeing uh, how cryptography is used as a network security tool. Symmetric key cryptography is going to be the third subpart. Asymmetric key cryptography, another important uh, tool, would be the fourth part. And last subpart of uh, this section would be how uh, security could be incorporated in different parts of the network. In part two, analysis of the network security, this is perhaps the interesting part. And uh, uh, here, some exciting concepts which we always listen about will be discussed. For example, different network threats, viruses, worms, Trojan horse, these will be discussed. And uh, how different countermeasures are deployed uh, in order to take care of these threats will also be discussed. We have got different network security model, uh, which will also be uh, discussed in detail and uh, how access control and uh, different techniques and principles could be used to make the network resilient against security threats and vulnerabilities. We will discuss some uh, real-time examples that could be used and uh, uh, deployed um, to make the network more secure. Uh, the topics, these topics will be covered in lecture 5 to lecture 8. So four lectures uh, will be covering the analysis of network security. The part B is about cryptography as a network security tool. Remember that uh, uh, cryptography is a classical network security tool which has been, uh, uh, which is being used for centuries and has appeared to be a fantastic tool against any type of uh, security threats and vulnerabilities. We will uh, also be discussing some basic terminologies like ciphertext, plain text, how key could be used and different types of key could be used to make the plain text 
uh, secure to make the plain text uh, encrypted and sent over a insecure channel. Steganography is one technique. Substitution and transposition ciphers will also part uh, will also form part of this lecture, and uh, we will definitely have a look on uh, um, a, an encryption technique that is Caesar cipher. These topics, which I have just mentioned, they will be covered uh, from lecture nine uh, to lecture ten. The part C is about uh, symmetric key cryptography. Here, some more technical components of this course are discussed. For example, Fistel cipher, another encryption technique, uh, a very uh, fantastic encryption standard that is data encryption standard DES. This will be discussed in detail and uh, uh, different rounds and different variations of DES will also form part of this, tech, uh, this uh, particular part. Uh, there are some more sophisticated encryption techniques like uh, advanced encryption standard AES. This will uh, be discussed in detail and limitations of the symmetric key cryptography will also be told in this, uh, in this particular part. Uh, these topics will be covered from lecture number 11 till lecture number 17. The fourth part uh, is asymmetric key cryptography. Now this is uh, uh, another sub part where we will be discussing some technical, more technical components like uh, uh, what is exactly an asymmetric key cryptography and uh, what are the requirements and challenges in order to, uh, in order to transmit uh, the data over insecure channels using asymmetric keys. Diffie-Hellman key exchange, this is another technique which is an example of asymmetric key would be discussed here. Rivest Shamir and Edelman, the, these were three scientists who invented uh, the uh, uh, a very, f a very you can say, uh, foolproof um, asymmetric key cryptography and named as RSA, this will also be discussed in this particular part. Uh, despite RSA being uh, very foolproof, but again, there are uh, some attacks towards RSA. We will also see how uh, RSA could be made secure against, um, against these vulnerabilities. There are hybrid crypto systems and uh, quantum cryptography that will also be part of this particular subsection. Uh, we will cover these particular topics from lecture number 18 to lecture number 23. The last part of uh, part 2 is uh, uh, incorporating security in other parts of the network. Uh, network is comprised of uh, different uh, subdomains, different areas. For example, uh, wireless, you can think of uh, how wireless networks could be made secure and uh, how different types of uh, security protocols could be used in order to make the network uh, secure. Some of the examples like uh, SNMP, uh, Simple Network Management Protocol and uh, some other uh, protocols will also be discussed in this particular uh, subsection. The, these topics will be covered in lecture number 24 to lecture number 26. The last part of this course is perhaps the exciting one and uh, uh, the title is Internet Security. So we will also be having a look on how Internet uh, could be made secure because we are most of the time connected to the Internet. We are uh, uh, sending our pictures and downloading different contents. So how different uh, attacks can occur on the internet and uh, how can different tools, principles and techniques could be used in order to make our communication over the internet more secure. Some of the examples like Sobic F-WOM, uh, grappling hook attack, 
Morris Internet Worm. These will be discussed and uh, some of the important and uh, security protocols such as uh, HTTPS and uh, Secure Shell SSH will also be discussed in this last part of the course. This part will be covered in lecture number 27 to lecture number 32. The last two lectures, that is lecture number 31 and 32, are reserved for the revision of the course and we will be revising all those contents which we have, uh, which we have learned in the last 30 lectures. So that was the summary of the course. If uh, we are all ready and set, so let us begin with the very important concept and that is uh, what is security. We first need to learn what exactly do we mean by security. Our first lecture today is about security concept. Here are the outlines of today's lecture. What is security? Unless and until we don't know what do we mean by security, we won't be able to incorporate security in our networks. There are different uh, security violation categories and we need to discuss and we need to understand how different uh, categories uh, are there in order to make the uh, computing environment more secure. And lastly, security measure levels. These involve uh, uh, employing security at uh, different uh, levels to make the computing environment more secure. By the end of today's lecture, students will be able to understand the basics of uh, computer security or a system security and to understand and distinguish between different breaches of security. Let us first talk about uh, the security problem. There is uh, a definition which has been given by Silver Shorts and uh, the definition says a system is secure if resources are used and accessed as intended under all circumstances. So a system is considered to be secure if all of its resources are used by its user safely and securely according to its purpose under all circumstances. Now if you carefully observe this definition, here are four things that, uh, that need to be uh, considered. First of all, there will be resources. There will be resources that needs to be made secure. There are, uh, these resources will be used and accessed and uh, the resources will be used and accessed according to their purpose and the system will remain secure if all the resources are used and accessed according to their purpose in all circumstances. Let us begin with an example. Consider a classroom environment. The classroom needs to be made secure. Now this particular classroom is comprised of different resources. One resource is your projector. Other resources include chairs and desks and whiteboard or a sound system that are there in order to make the lecture delivery more suitable and more convenient. Let us first discuss what is security. A definition in the Silver Shorts book says that a system is secure if resources are used and accessed as intended under all circumstances. Now if you carefully observe this particular definition, there are four things. Number one, resources. Your resources could be, uh, your resources could be, for example, in a classroom environment, it could be a projector, number of chairs, a table, these are the examples of resources. In a computing environment, in a computer network, the resources include a printer. Another example of a resource could be your servers. Some other examples in a 
computing environment of resources is uh, some uh, is for example your access points that are installed to provide wireless connectivity the second part says that uh, these resources are used and accessed now this emphasizes that the resources will be used only by the authorized persons so the authorized persons in a network in a networking environment are the uh, are the employees that are part of this organization or the users that are registered for uh, registered to access network resources in that particular environment now the third part says that the resources will be used and accessed as intended this means that every resource has its purpose so the system or the network will remain secure if that particular resource is used according to the according to its purpose and lastly in all circumstances we don't want the purpose of that particular resource to be fulfilled at some time and not to be fulfilled at the other time now think of the example as a, a projector that has been installed in a classroom uh, in order to deliver the lectures now this projector will remain secure if it is only used by the instructor in order to give in order to deliver the lecture contents this projector will be insecure if for example students start using it or if this projector is uh, used and accessed by either the students or the instructors for a purpose other than lecture delivery for example they start watching some uh, live match so this will also be not the purpose of uh, this particular projector and as we have seen that in all circumstances this means that the projector has been installed in a classroom environment so that the lectures will be delivered throughout the year this does not mean that uh, during the working hours this lecture will be used for uh, contents delivery and when there are off peak hours when the university is off and students are uh, uh, students are uh, sent back to home then this projector could be used for watching movies and uh, some other contents so this uh, this means that uh, any type of the network secure uh, any type of the network resource will remain secure if it is being used and accessed by the authorized users according to its purpose in all circumstances now you can think of uh, some other examples in your mind and uh, see how other uh, uh, how different things around you are either secure or insecure so as long as the resources around you they are being used and accessed according to their purpose in all circumstances they are secure if any of the resource is not being used by the authorized user or is not being used and accessed according to its purpose or is not accessed and used in all circumstances this means that this is insecure so now you must be able to distinguish between what is a secure what is security and what is not uh, what is not security so whenever we talk about uh, security we need to ensure that these particular uh, uh, these four components are there and these four components are ensured to make the system more secure let us see some more examples in first example there is a user let's call it user a which transmit a file and that file contains some sensitive information maybe some family photographs to the user b now there is another user user c which is not authorized to read this file but that user c is able to monitor the transmission that user C 
is watching or observing what is sent by user A to user B. So this means that there is uh, uh, the transmission between A and B needs to be secure because the resource that is that particular sensitive data is only intended for user A and user B. User C is not authorized to access or use this data. So there is some security breach and this particular transmission is not secure and we need to make this particular transmission secure and uh, we need to ensure that how the transmission between B and A or transmission between A and B could be successfully completed. Think of uh, another example that is uh, an, a network administrator, let's call uh, the administrator as D, he or she sends a message to a computer E for updating an authorization file. There is another user which you can, you, you can call an attacker. Let's say the attacker is named as F. The attacker F intercepts the message, alters its contents, add or delete some entries and then forward the message to E. E accepts the message and update the authorization file. अगर यहाँ पर आप होर करें, तो administrator D ने computer E को एक फाइल भेजी, बीच में एक attacker entity F बैठा हुआ था, ठीक है, जिसने ये message receive किया, इसको manipulate किया, इसमें values को change किया, और फिर E को भेज दिया, E को मालूम नहीं कि ये message मुझे D ने भेजा है, क्या ये इसके contents modify हुए हैं, या as it is भेजे गए हैं, और वो जो message change हो चुका है, उसको accordingly accommodate कर लेता है. Now, you can also uh, observe that this is another example of a security breach. We don't want uh, any of the user apart from user D and E to intercept the communication. So this is another example of security breach. And if you see that here, the resource was also not used and accessed by the authorized user as intended. So this is a security breach. The worst case would be uh, instead of uh, uh, changing some contents of the file which the administrator D sent to user E, this time F totally changed the message. Instead of changing some of the contents, user, uh, the attacker F, it changes all the contents and send it to the user E and user E accommodates all the changes. So this is, uh, uh, this was, uh, these were a couple of examples that uh, how uh, security uh, could be breached and uh, how attackers can intercept some communication, some data exchange and uh, can violate security. Now this particular slide is the uh, most important one and uh, if you understand uh, this slide, I'll un I will say that you will understand most of the concepts of the security. Uh, there are different categories of security violation. The first one is breach of confidentiality. Breach of confidentiality says that uh, if the data is read by unauthorized users, this means that confidentiality has been breached. Confidentiality says that uh, the data is only for specific user to read. No other users can read this data. If any other users apart from the main user reads this data, this means that breach of confidentiality has occurred. Now think of uh, some of the examples around you. You receive different type of uh, uh, messages on your mobile phones on daily basis. You receive different types of emails in your email accounts or you have got uh, some letters you receive some letters which are uh, for you 
for you only and there is a tag on your, the letter private and confidential. Now all these mean that only you are the user to read the letter, to read the email or to read the message that has been sent on your phone. If any other user apart from you reads any of this content, this means that breach of confidentiality has occurred. Now, the important thing about breach of confidentiality is only the data has been read by unauthorized user. It has not been modified, it has only been read. This means that if you have a message for you, and it is not read by someone else, then it is breach of confidentiality. Ho gaya. Some other example that you can think of breach of confidentiality is imagine that you are sitting in a computing lab and you have opened your email account and you are reading your email. Now any other user who is sitting beside you, he also tries to look onto the screen and he also tries to read your email. If the other users, they are successful in reading your email, this means that breach of confidentiality has occurred. You are enrolled in the virtual program. So you receive some of the letters from the headquarters. And uh, these, some of uh, these letters, they are titled as private and confidential. This means that uh, the name which has been mentioned on this letter, only he is he or she is the authorized user to read this letter. Anybody else, if they read the contents of the letter, they will be breaching the confidentiality. So, we need to ensure that uh, the data which is being sent, who is the authorized user to read this data. And if any other user reads this data, this means that breach of confidentiality has occurred. The second part, uh, the second category is uh, breach of integrity. Now, breach of integrity is different from breach of confidentiality in the case that in breach of confidentiality, the data is read by the unauthorized user. In the integrity, if the data has been read and modified, this means that there is breach of integrity. So, if some contents were sent to a specific user and an attacker intercepted the message and changed some of the contents or changed all the contents of this message, this means that breach of integrity has occurred. An example of uh, breach of integrity is that you have uh, sent a letter to your friend and you have asked him for some money. Now this letter is uh, received by an attacker and the attacker changes the value from 1000 to let's say 10,000 and he again uh, cover the letter and send it to your friend. Now your friend has seen that you have requested 10,000 rupees instead of 1,000. So this means that the original message has been changed and the breach of integrity has occurred. One example of breach of confidentiality is shown to you in the previous slide where we have seen the network administrator ask one of its user to change some contents in the database file. Now an attacker, attacker between these users, he receives the message, he changes the contents of the message and then sends to the E. Now the original message has been changed. If the original message has been changed, this means that breach of integrity has occurred and uh, whenever there is a breach of integrity, this means that uh, the data is no longer trustworthy and you can no longer rely on the data. 
مطلب یہ ہوا کہ اوریجنل میسیج کے جو کانٹنس تھے وہ چینج کر دیے گئے اور اب آپ اس میسیج پر مزید اعتماد نہیں کر سکتے ہیں دی تھرڈ سیکیورٹی وائلیشن کیٹیگری سیز بریچ آف اویلیبلیٹی جیسا کہ نام سے ظاہر ہے کہ ریسورسز کا اویلیبل نہ ہونا بریچ آف اویلیبلیٹی کو شو کرتا ہے ان ایک کمپیوٹنگ انوارمنٹ دی امپورٹنٹ ریسورسز آر ڈیٹا سو بریچ آف اویلیبلیٹی ویل اکر ایف دیر is destruction caused to the data if the data is no longer available if the resource which you are trying to access is no longer available this means that there has occurred some breach of confidentiality think of uh, an example where you try to access your online virtual account virtual commsets account but you are unable to do so For example, if the server which you are trying to access is no longer available or the data on the server is no longer available, this means that breach of availability has occurred. Now, the important term to emphasize here is destruction of the data. Now, you see that we are, uh, we are, we first talk about unauthorized reading of data. Secondly, we describe unauthorized changing of data, which is breach of integrity. The availability says that the data is purposely destroyed so that the legitimate users can no longer access, your, uh, access their own data. Some of the examples of breach of availability is that uh, sometime you try to access your online accounts and you are unable to access those accounts this means that breach of availability has occurred you might have faces you might have faced some cases where you have tried to access your email account or a facebook account but uh, despite giving the correct username and password you are unable to log into your account so these are some of the examples of uh, breach of availability uh, the fourth security violation category is theft of service this this particular category talks about unauthorized use of resources as the name indicate the service the resource has been theft the service is being used by unauthorized users so if this type of situation occurs in a computing environment or in a network this means that theft of service has uh, occurred and this is another security violation category you can think of uh, different examples of theft of services for example some of the resources which are uh, available in a university environment if these are being used by unauthorized users this means that uh, theft of service has occurred uh, think of uh, an example where there is a university environment the classroom is dedicated for students and the instructors in order to deliver the lecture contents there is another server room which is comprised of uh, different uh, hardwares and servers now the classroom is used only by teachers and uh, instructors if anybody else use this classroom as a resource this means that theft of service has occurred coming to the example of a server room the server you the server room should only be accessed by those users who are working on uh, working in this environment any other user who is not supposed to enter in the server room if they try to enter and access the resources this means that there is theft of services the last security violation category is denial of service there is the difference between theft of service and denial of service the theft of service says that uh, the resources will be used by the authorized users and some of the unauthorized users 
will also use these resources. Denial of services says that the resource will not be used by the legitimate users, will not be used by the authorized users and some unauthorized users, let's say attackers or hackers, they have penetrated into the system and uh, they have attacked the system so that the legitimate users can no longer access these particular resources. So let me summarize the security violation categories again. The first one is confidentiality. This means that only the authorized users can read the data. If any of the unauthorized users, he or she reads the data, this means that breach of confidentiality has occurred. The second category is breach of integrity, where the unauthorized user not only reads the data, but change the data. Either the unauthorized user will change some part of the data or can totally change the data or the message. The third security violation category is breach of availability where the attacker or the unauthorized user destructs the data and uh, the data is no longer available. The fourth security violation category is theft of service, which says that there are some resources in the computing environment. The authorized users are using the resources and some of the unauthorized users are also using these resources. So if any of the unauthorized user is using these resources, this means that theft of service has occurred. And the last one is denial of service, which says that uh, the resources, they have been destructed in the sense that the legitimate user, the authorized user, when he or she tries to access this, the data or the service is no longer available. You have heard about uh, denial of service attack on servers, where your email servers or uh, your file servers they are attacked and the legitimate users who are uh, who have user names and passwords who are supplying these credentials uh, correctly but still they are unable to use the service so we call them denial of service so uh, so you need to remember these security categories and your security is nothing but these categories. So if you want to incorporate security in a computing system, in a computing environment, you need to make sure that all these categories are uh, ensured and all these, uh, all these uh, aspects of the security are carefully addressed. Now let us move on to the security measure levels. The interesting point to mention here is that it is impossible to have absolute security. This means that you can achieve 99.99% security, but you cannot achieve 100% security. There is nothing in the world that is 100% secure. Yes, I am true about this statement that there is nothing in the world that is 100% secure. Despite there are different tools and technologies being deployed to make the system secure, but still they are attacked and hackers and crackers, they are somehow successful to penetrate in the system and they gain access to the sensitive data. But remember, whenever we are planning to incorporate security, we always try to achieve 100% security. But unfortunately, we cannot claim that the system which we have developed or designed or the protocols which we have implemented or the technologies which we have deployed in this environment have made this 100% secure. Why is it impossible to have absolute security? Why are we unable to achieve 100% security? The reason lies 
in the following points. We need to make sure that uh, security is incorporated at the following four levels in order to make things 100% secure. That is physical, human, operating system and network. Let us discuss them one by one. The physical security says that you need to physically secure your resources. This include locking the doors, having uh, the windows closed and locked. This also in include uh, placing sound sensors or alarms so that if anybody enters physically enter into the uh, restricted area, there will be a buzzer. So these are all the examples of physical security. One of the example of physical security in our daily life is that whenever you leave your room or whenever you leave your house, you lock the main gate, you lock your house. So this also comes in physical security. In a network, there are uh, some important resources like servers, like switches, like access point printers. If you have observed, they are carefully logged into the iron boxes or they are stored the uh, importantly the servers are in are uh, placed and uh, installed in the server rooms and access to the server room is restricted only for authorized users so these all come under the category of physical security think of uh, another example that is uh, data centers which is comprised of uh, hundreds and thousands of servers now these are physically secured these are placed in uh, in the racks and uh, logged uh, in a secure environment so that uh, no authorized users can have physical access to the data okay uh, you may have heard about uh, some physical security incidents that is uh, uh, someone has uh, uh, someone has stolen or attacker has uh, stolen the hard disk inside from the computer now the physical security says that if the hard disk in a computer comprises is comprised of some sensitive data so it should be logged the computer case should be logged in the sense that uh, no physical access should be granted so one example is uh, uh, one example to ensure physical security is to have uh, uh, locks using key key locks or uh, uh, closing the doors or placing the alarms and uh, making the resources and data physically secured from the unauthorized users the security could be ensured at another level and that is uh, human humans play very important role in addressing the security remember we are talking about those humans or which are directly involved with the organization or which directly deal with the data or which directly uh, uses the resources sometime there is insider job means that a person from within the organization can act as an attacker and can can be harmful to the company's sensitive data let us think of an example we all have uh, installed uh, internet at our home and perhaps uh, the connection is given to us by PDCL so uh, imagine that uh, one day you request uh, you log a complaint and you request a technician to come to your home and fix the internet after some time you listen a knock on your door and you see a man standing in front of you and he is asking for uh, he is asking to fix your internet so will you let him enter into your house now you have to be careful about uh, letting him enter to your house or not if the user has requested some internet complaint 
and he is expecting some technician to fix this, then prior to let him enter to the house, he should he must ask the identity for the technician. If he is displaying his identity card, then this means that he is the legitimate technician and he is really there to fix your internet connection. But if he is unable to provide any connectivity, then you must be careful and you must not let him enter into your house. Who knows that uh, someone else has intercepted your message and someone else is trying to enter into your house. You may have uh, uh, read different news in the newspaper where, uh, where a servant which had been serving for several years has, uh, uh, has helped in, in, in the robbery and uh, the whole house has been robbed by that particular servant. Now this is the insider job. Okay? So humans are always uh, an important factor in order to make sure that security sh should be incorporated. Uh, we have seen we have seen different examples where uh, an employee has been fired and uh, after few days there is some serious attack on the important resources of the company this means that the employee which has been fired had access to company sensitive data and as a revenge he has uh, compromised the data he has deliberately compromised the data so we need to be careful about uh, humans whenever we talk about uh, uh, whenever we talk about deploying security at humans level social engineering says that uh, sometime you receive knock at your door and you see some company salesmen offering you different types of uh, uh, items and uh, sometimes they request you uh, to enter into the house so you need to be careful and you should not let any type of strangers enter into uh, enter in the premises this also implies that unauthorized users should not uh, be allowed to enter into uh, the company's network or to the company's premises or to the organization resources let me also emphasize here that uh, i am uh, i am serving as a faculty member at comsats but i am a legitimate user for certain resources and i am an authorized user uh, i am an authorized user but for some other resources i am not authorized for example to to use the classroom yes i am the authorized user but to enter the server room and to physically gain access to the uh, server installed I am not the authorized users. Only those staff members who are part of uh, the server room, they are the authorized users. So, human in this case should be uh, should be carefully observed, and it should be carefully decided that who should have access to which type of data. The third security level is operating system. Uh, think of your Windows operating system which comes with uh, built-in features to make the uh, to make your uh, computing environment more secure there are uh, different uh, protection mechanisms and there are different debugging tools that have been installed in your operating system Windows for example and you can use them in order to make uh, the system more uh, secure uh, Antiviruses, anti spams. These are uh, also uh, these are also developed for specific operating systems to make the uh, to make the computing environment more secure. The last level where the security could be deployed, and uh, perhaps the most important level is network. Okay, and uh, as network is comprised of uh, several nodes and sometime it is connected uh, locally and sometime there is an internet connection so this means that you really need to make your network secure perhaps the most important one is deploying security and the network and most 
complex one is to deploy security at the network level why because it has got uh, different uh, domains there are local connections there are local users there are local machines servers installed and uh, there is an internet connection which is letting rest of the world uh, connected to your network so you really need to make your network more secure and you really need to see that how different uh, uh, types of communications they could be uh, they could be made secure okay uh, it is the network which uh, the hackers use and enters into your system and uh, manipulate the data or either ye, they can breach the confidentiality or they can breach uh, uh, breach the integrity or even they can destruct the data so uh, these are uh, the examples of uh, four basic levels that should be addressed in order to make the computing environment and in order to make the system more secure remember that uh, deploying security at any of this level is not sufficient and you need to ensure that security proper security tools and mechanisms are uh, installed deployed implemented at all these levels in order to make the uh, whole environment more secure we have previously discussed that it is not possible to have 100% security but at least we must target 99.9% .9 security and uh, one last uh, point about uh, uh, the security is that security is as weak as the weakest link in the chain this means that uh, the hackers and attackers they are always looking for the loopholes in the system to enter and to penetrate and to steal the sensitive data or to steal important or sensitive resources of the system so uh, while from developers perspective or from the designers perspective when a network is being deployed a computing environment is being deployed the network person or the developer he or she mistakenly leaves some point which is exploited by an attacker and he enters into the system we have seen many examples where some of the uh, very large and renowned companies of the world has been hacked and the attackers were successful to penetrate into the system and they compromised uh, and, uh, and they compromised the important data those who play video games and those who have heard about xbox there are some online games so it there was a recent incident where the sony's the world largest and renowned companies the sony network was uh, hacked and the hackers uh, penetrated into the system and destructed most of the company's data and uh, millions of the online users they suffered so this is one example there are some other examples where world um, uh, renowned banks have been hacked and uh, the attackers were successful enough to penetrate into the system and they steal uh, some important company's data uh, so we need to ensure that uh, appropriate security tools applications and protocols have been deployed have been uh, deployed at uh, respective levels in order to achieve maximum security one more important point to mention here is that is too much security a problem the answer is yes and the answer is no for example we want uh, a more secure system but ensuring more security will definitely bring some inconvenience think of an example 
where you want your university campus to be secure. So you enter from the gate, you show your identity card to the guard, then you, then after matching the figure or matching your face uh, uh, image with his registered database, the guards let you enter into the campus, you sign in, you provide your national identity card, then you go to the classroom, the instructor sees your identity card and then he let you sit into the uh, uh, into the classroom and attend the lecture. So any type of movement in your university campus will involve uh, representing your university card at different levels. Now in this case the university campus administration can ensure security but from users point of view this is inconvenient and uh, the user is suffering a lot and though he is a legitimate user but all the time the legitimate user, the authorized user and this particular student has to represent his card one time and after another and after another. So there is a trade-off between security and convenience. So if you go for more and more security then there will be less convenience and if you go for more and more convenience then this means that you are trading off between security. So it is the responsibility of uh, companies uh, or the organization network administration staff or the higher authorities to decide whether which is the appropriate level to ensure security and to ensure convenience for the user. So that is the end of uh, today's lecture. So let me summarize that what we have discussed today. So we have learned what is security. Remember that we have uh, uh, remember that we have seen that uh, a system is said to be secure if the resources are used and accessed as intended under all circumstances. If the resources are not used and accessed as intended and according to the circumstances, this means that the system is no longer secure. We have also seen the categories of uh, uh, security, security violation, breach of uh, confidentiality, breach of uh, confidentiality talks about unauthorized reading of data, breach of integrity says that the unauthorized user will change the data, breach of availability says that the unauthorized user will destruct the data, the data will be no longer available. The fourth category which we discussed today was uh, breach of uh, uh, availability where uh, uh, some of the network resources or some of the system resources will also be used by the unauthorized users. So these are theft of services. And lastly, we discussed that uh, denial of service where the legitimate user can no longer access some of the services in the network or some of the services in the computing environment. And uh, uh, we also discussed different levels of security. The, we always need to achieve 100% security, but achieving 100% security is uh, not possible, but we can always try and attempt and to make, uh, to make achieve absolute security we employ security at different levels that is physical, human and operating system and lastly network level. Applying security at all these levels can ensure that uh, uh, the system can be trustworthy and now the resources in this particular system are secure enough. Uh, in next lecture we will learn about uh, different methods that are used to violate security. We will also see different types of attacks that are uh, there in a computing environment. Uh, for example, there are uh, threats, vulnerabilities, there are different types of uh, uh, viruses, worms, 
there are different types of uh, other tools that can uh, attack your computing environment and uh, we will also discuss the concept of firewall that is how we can countermeasure these types of attacks uh, hopefully today's lecture has given you enough knowledge about understanding the broad picture of security and uh, i'll see you uh, i'll see you with more details in next lecture thank you and goodbye allah hafiz